for your talk, Sartaj, on evaluating the patient. Thank you, sir. Uh, so good morning, everyone. I would like to thank my doctor, thanking Dr. Sashi Kapoor for giving me the opportunity to be a part of this instruction course. Today, let's learn the approach to interpreting coronary topography and pachymetry. Now, it's important to remember that both of these, they are the foundation of, for a successful refractive surgery and a happy patient with a stable cornea in the future. There are three different techniques for determining corneal topography. The first and oldest is placido-based and began with the placido disc and was followed with the video keratoscope. The next is the slit scanning system, utilizing the OPSCAN as a combination of slit scanning and placido imaging. The third and most popular used today is the, is the Scheinflug based devices, which will be the Pentacam, the Sirius, and the Galilei. Now, the information that these modern topographers provide us is overwhelming, and it can be very easy to just get lost in the maze that is created by all this information. So it's very important to narrow what you want to look at. So let's start by just looking at the four map refractive display that these machines give. Uh, you start off by looking at the elevation maps, the pachymetry map, the anterior, the sagittal curvature map. You need to look at the keratometry values for the front and the back surface of the cornea. You need to look at the corneal thickness data that comes out and some of the data related to anterior chamber. It's important to adopt a strategy to be able to browse and analyze this information in an efficient manner. So first and foremost is always identify that the report that you are looking at is for the correct patient. It's a very simple thing, but sometimes it can lead to a lot of mismanagement. The next, you need to confirm the quality of specification. Now this specifies the quality of the data that has been captured. It should be a white box with OK, otherwise there is some missing information which has been extrapolated by the machine and will be shown in a yellow box or a red box. If uh, this is the case, it is ideal to try and capture the data once again by repeating the scan. Next, we look at the pachymetry. Uh, the pupil center is the corneal thickness, which is corresponding to the pupil center location, and its coordinates are important to evaluate angle kappa. And normally, the x coordinate should be less than 0.2 millimeters, which corresponds to less than 5 degrees. The pachy apex uh, represents the thickness at the apex of the cornea, and the computer considers the apex as the origin of the coordinates. The thinnest location, uh, of the thin which is the location of the thinnest point of the cornea, and the difference between the thinnest location and pachy apex normally will be less than 10 microns. And the y coordinate is the one that is important to look at. And it's most often normal when it is less than 0.5 uh, millimeters. But uh, if it's between 0.5 and 1, it'll be very suspicious. And if it's more than 1, then it is quite abnormal. Now, compared with ultrasound pachymetry, which measures thickness at only one point, the Pentacam can generate 50,000 data points to describe the true thickness. And a normal pachymetry app will, a map will always have a concentric shape. Next, let's look at Kmax, which is the maximum curvature power of the whole anterior surface of the cornea and is expressed in diopters. A value of below 47 is suitable for refractive surgery, and a value between 47 and 49 can still be considered, but it is a moderate risk factor. Next, we look at the Q value, which is defined as the radial change from the center to the periphery of the corneal surface. And it reflects the corneal shape and the optical properties, including the refractive power, the spherical aberrations, and the aberration distribution. And a normal value will be anything between minus 1 to 0. Looking at the anterior curvature map, which represents the anterior surface diaptric power measured by the sagittal method, and one of the normal patterns which can be seen here is the symmetric bow tie, but there are a number of different patterns that can be observed on this. Now, it's also important to understand the settings for the machine. And uh, when, you, when you want to choose these, it's important to remember that uh, a 0.25 step, as can be seen all the way on the left, can lead to a lot of noise, while a one diopter step can lead to wash out of all the details and you can miss a lot of information. So a half diopter step has, step has been suggested as the ideal value that best represents all the information we need. Uh, coming to elevation-based tomography, now while the placido imaging is very useful for determining the surface corneal curvature, elevation is what helps us understand and determine the overall corneal shape and the spatial thickness profile. Now, in, in order to make this data that we get clinically relevant, uh, we need to compare it against something. And uh, we usually will compare it against a, bet, a, a, a best fit sphere. 
and which is constructed by fitting the reference sphere surface as smoothly as possible to the data surface, as can be seen in this diagram. When we look at the elevation maps of the cornea, we can again, we can see a symmetric hourglass pattern. We can see certain tongue-like extensions or irregular patterns, which should be matters of caution. Uh, the elevation map has a color scale where anything anterior to the best fit sphere is in red, anything posterior to it is in blue. Uh, normal values will be anything less than 12 microns, but when anything between 13 to 15 is suspicious, and anything more than 15 will be a risk factor. And the difference between the front and the back surfaces should ideally be less than 5 microns. Uh, if a patient has a keratoconus on a best fit sphere, we'll see it as a conical protrusion because it'll be above the best fit sphere. Another great feature of some of the modern tomographers are differential maps, which can help us uh, track the progress of this patient from scan to scan, and we can easily compare them to on the same screen. Uh, next, we come to the Bell and Ambrosio uh, Enhanced Ectasia Display, which is an excellent tool for identifying patients who are at risk of ectasia. And uh, it, the best part is that it gives the information in a very colorful display, which are very easy to uh, pick up. It's lesser chances that you'll miss anything that is irregular. Now, the first two standard elevation maps uh, that come, they display the baseline relative elevation of the cornea to the best fit sphere. Below them are the anterior and posterior exclusion maps. These are enhanced elevation maps, which display elevation data with the best fit sphere, calculated using all the raw elevation data located outside a four millimeter circle, which is centered on the thinnest point of the cornea. Next, we come to the D value, which takes five different indices, uh, taking into uh, account the variation in the front surface, the back surface, the pachymetric progression, the thinnest point, and the thinnest point displacement. And it uh, takes all of these five parameters and then performs a regression analysis against the standard database of normal and keratoconic eyes. Any value less than 1.6 diopters is normal. Anything between 1.6 and 2.6 is a little suspicious. And anything above 2.6 is abnormal. And it's shown to have a very high sensitivity and specificity, specificity for picking up patients with keratoconus and ectasia. Uh, the thickness profiles that are provided, um, the corneal thickness spatial profile, it describes the average progression of thickness starting from the thinnest location to the corneal periphery. And the percentage thickness increase is the percentage progression of the CTSP. Uh, we need to look at the red line, which is the data for the patient that you're examining. And ideally, it should follow the curvature of the black dotted lines that are there. Uh, the ectatic corneas, they will thin out and they will change the curvature more rapidly as they go from the center to the periphery of the cornea. And that is, it's very useful to help differentiate this uh, between just what is a normally normal thin cornea and an actual ectatic cornea. Uh, average values between 0.8 and 1.1 are normal. Anything above 1.1 is suggestive of ectatic disorders. So a quick slope like this is suggestive of ectatic disorders and must be cautioned. Uh, the ambrosio the, the relation thickness uh, values. Uh, this is a concept that combines the thinnest pachymetry values with the pachymetry distribution. And this facilitates, again, the identification of an abnormal cornea from just a normal thin cornea. And ideally, it should be over 400 microns for patients to be suitable and considered for refractive procedures. So let's just discuss a few cases. So again, we'll go step by step. We look at the quality of the scan, which is OK. We look at the pachymetry values, which appear good in this case, along with the coordinates. The Q value falls, falls within a normal range. The pattern on the interior, the, on interior curvature is normal. The um, uh, keratometry values are within a normal range. Interior elevation is normal. Posterior elevation is normal. The bad display is also good. So this would be a suitable case for uh, refractive surgery. Next, we come to a patient, another patient, and again, the quality of the scan is OK, but the thickness of the cornea is it's quite thin, especially the thinnest location is, again, there's a significant deviation also in the coordinates, which should be automatically a, a red sign for us. Uh, although the Q value in this case is normal, but the, in even the interior curvature, if you look at it, we can see a claw pattern over there. Uh, we, the, even the K-max in this case is 48.6, the anterior elevation is 28, posterior elevation is 47, and even the bad display is giving an index of 7.41. So this patient quite clearly has keratoconus and should be counseled for C3R. Uh, but sometimes you can have cases like these which are not quite so obvious, neither here, neither there. Uh, again, the quality is okay. The pachymetry is within normal range. 
the Q value is okay. Uh, the anterior curvature is a symmetric bow tie. It's just against the rule. Uh, but if you look at the spatial thickness profile, it does tend to uh, sort of fall away steeply as we go towards the periphery. The K-max is 47, which is borderline. Anterior elevation is, uh, again, normal. Um, the posterior elevation is showing an irregular pattern. The uh, ART values are lower, which, again, should be a little bit of caution. Maybe this is a patient where you want to consider combining a C3R along with a refractive procedure or at least counseling the patient that he's at maybe a slightly higher risk than normal. Uh, coming to pachymetry, uh, there are basically two techniques. Uh, there's optical pachymetry and there's ultrasound pachymetry. In optical, you have Scheinflug, slit scanning, ASOCT, and specular microscopy. Um, all the different techniques that are used for uh, pachymetry, they show a very high correlation, and it's probably best to just use the same machine you use for topography to also obtain your pachymetry values. Always remember, measure twice, cut once. Thank you. Dr. Grewal, you s the third case which you have shown, if the age of the patient was 50 years or 45 years, what will you consider? Because most of these patients, they have a fairly good resistance to develop the keratoconus. Uh, yes, but at 45, 50, um, I mean, the, what I'm considering for refractive surgery will be very different. I'll have to look at, is the, what, like, is the patient uh, looking at some kind of presbyopia correction? But uh, yes, uh, older patients, you're right, there is a natural cross-linking that is occurring. Uh, they will be stable. The second thing is, uh, will you keep the epithelial mapping along with that, especially the older patients? Most of them have a normal epithelial cells. And recently, all the suspected cases which are the 40 plus, even though he's showing the keratoconic pattern, they have a normal epithelial cells. And three of these patients, we did a PRK at present. Uh, need the three PRK. We're just waiting how long, how they behave, because uh, epithelial mapping, I personally feel, is a very sensitive thing as far no, as the are you, uh, is concerned. RC, are you saying that it should have been abnormal if it was really keratoconus, the epithelial mapping? Even if and it is fonful keratoconus, mm -hmm. you get the sensitivity first from the epithelium. You pick so up very early. Thank you. Before even you can see something like that.